Good morning, good morning, people of God. Amen. It is now time for our Marketplace Daily Brunch and Devotion. And I am actually coming to you during brunch time. So thank God. Amen. My morning has not been as hectic as sometimes some mornings get to be for me. So I am able to come to you on time today. And I'm so excited about the word of God that I need to share with you today because I believe this is a special word and a special devotion for some of you that will watch this, uh, this replay or watch this video today. And so our devotion today, amen, February the 11th, uh, that's the day it is, uh, Thursday, amen, got one more day uh, for this week before some of our work week will be over. And then we look, you know, ha have have the pleasure of hopefully doing something exciting and, and just spending time the way we would like to spend time for ourselves or with our families or just spend the time in the presence of God, getting that extra time that you can spend, which is what I always look forward to in the presence of God. So I am excited today for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let me tell you, you need to rejoice. That is a command for you to rejoice. Amen. So our devotion topic today is not faith, but sight. Let me say that again, not faith, but sight. You know, some of us, I believe the reason why uh, this uh, this devotion is very special and, and it's going to minister to quite a few people is because some of us, a man, are not walking by faith. We are walking by sight. And the word of God says that, a man, that we walk by faith not by sight. And in this season that we are living in, and this is the season of harvest, I truly, truly believe that. I don't care what's going on around the world. I truly believe, amen, this is a season of harvest. Amen. Last year, I know I planted, me and Bishop, we planted seeds. I can't even, I, I, I don't even want to tell you how much we sold last year because of the expectations of what we have for the seeds that are coming up for this year in, in the year of harvest. And so for some of us, in order to be able to reap that harvest, we have got to step out by faith. And I know that it's hard. I know God has been dealing with me about another level of faith. But because, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're comfortable with our surroundings, we're comfortable with what we're familiar with, so for some of us, it's hard to let go. But I'm here to encourage you today, men and women of God, if God is speaking to your heart, hallelujah, trust him. Step out and trust God. Dare to believe God, because in this season, my God, hallelujah, I believe the floodgates are going to be opening up, and if you have not prepared yourself to receive that that God has for you, you will drown in the flood. It's not that the flood is not going to come for you, uh, come to you, but you will drown in the flood, because you did not prepare yourself, and one of the ways to prepare yourself is to step out on faith, believe God, do what he's, he's putting in your heart. Only you know what he's put, he's put in your heart to do. Amen. Only you know what he's told you to let go. Amen. This is a prophetic word for somebody that may be listening today. And I know uh, that, that, you know, God is telling you, trust me, step out on faith. Amen. Step out on faith. And so, amen, I just wanted to, to share that with you because I feel it so strong in my loins. I feel it so strong in my heart. And so I know that God is speaking to not just me, but several of you, amen, to trust him. Why? Because God wants to give you in the abundance. He wants to bless you with the abundance. And, 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 and you know what it is. You've been kicking it around for, for some time now. But you're just afraid to let go of what's familiar and what you're comfortable with. So the scripture today, amen, is going to be coming from Matthew, the 16th chapter and the 27th verse. Matthew 16, 27. And as we always do, we are going to be uh, reading the verse before and the verse after. And so the 26th verse says, for what is a man profit? For what is a man profited if 
he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. And I wanted to also, let me just go real quick. I meant to pull this up before I came on because, you know, I, I love also reading things in the Message Bible because the Message Bible, amen, sometimes it, it just makes it so much more clear. And so let me just try to pull that up in the Message Bible as well so I can kind of have both here to read kind of side by side. Hallelujah. So in the Message Bible, the 27th verse, it says, or the 26th, because I read the 26th there just now, it says, what kind of deal is it <laughs> to get everything you want, but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? What is it? What, what kind of deal is it that is enticing you so much that you can't trust God and step out on faith? That, 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 that it will cause you to sell, sell out your soul. What, what deal is it? Amen. When, when we are, are stepping out in faith, God is, he's expending, amen, our patience. He's expending our knowledge. He's expending, amen, our wisdom because no man can, 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 uh, 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 he says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so he is wanting to get you to a place where he can give you, amen, the abundance, the abundance. And so that 27th verse says, and that's, that's our key verse. I'm going to read it in the King James verse, uh, Version first. It says, For the Son of Man cometh in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. And in the Message Bible, that 27th verse says, Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself before you know it. The Son of Man will arrive with all the splendor of his father, accompanied by an army of angels. You will get everything you have coming to you, a personal gift. And so what I mean, what that means, I don't believe that means that God don't want us to be uh, entrepreneurs or he don't want us to be in business for ourselves. But when it said, don't be a man uh, uh, in a hurry to go in business for yourself, it means, I believe, leaving out God. Don't be in a hurry uh, to do what you're doing without consulting God, without, amen, hearing God's voice on the matter, without, amen, waiting on the leading of God about those decisions that you're making. Because when we go into business for ourselves and we don't, we don't acknowledge God and we don't take him, amen, in, in some of those uh, uh, adventures and, 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 you know, we don't uh, consult him before signing some of those contracts, amen, we, 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 we get our, ourselves in worse, worse situations. But when we realize that, you know what, we're not in business with ourselves. We're in business with God. We are about doing what God, what God is doing. You know, we're about making sure that the kingdom of God, amen, is financed. We're about making sure that, amen, we fulfill whatever God has called us to do in this earth realm, in the kingdom, his kingdom come, his will be done in earth. When we go into business with God, being the, 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 the head of our business, Man, there's nothing that God will, he said, I, there's nothing I will withhold from those that walk up right before me. And so the uh, 28th verse, we're going to go ahead and read that last verse. Verily I say, verily I say unto you that there be some standing here which shall not taste of death, which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Amen. And the 28th verse, amen, in the Message Bible reads, this isn't pie in the sky by and by. <laughs> Some of you standing here are going to see it take place. See the Son of Man, uh, uh, see the Son of Man in kingdom glory. Amen. And I believe that I am one of those that will see him coming, amen, in his glory, in the fullness of his glory. Hallelujah. I just believe that it's something that the Lord spoke to me when I was a little girl. Amen. And I mean a little girl, probably less than 10 years old, probably around between five and 10. The Lord spoke this to me. And I believe that I will be one that will be here when he comes back, amen, for the second coming. I believe that when he comes back, amen, I mean, to the, to the earth, amen, when the rapture takes place, I believe that I will be one of those that will be here. 
So I wanted to just share, amen, this devotion. I know it's a little bit, amen, because I did give some uh, prophetic words this morning, uh, but I believe that if you just trust God, amen, that God will, will, will show himself mighty and powerful in your life. Amen. So our, our, our story for today that goes with this devotion, it says, Today Christ is, hit, is hidden from our view. Although through the Holy Spirit, his lives, he lives, I mean, in our hearts. So even though Christ may be hidden from our view, if you have the Holy Spirit down on the inside of you, he's yet with you. He's yet in your heart. Amen. He's yet beside you. Amen. And so it says, Today is the day of faith. As Paul wrote, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. And as I told you, I believe in this season, the only way we're going to get, amen, the fullness of what God is doing for his people in this season, you have got to trust God. If there ever was a time, amen, if there ever was a time to trust God, to lean not to your own flesh, to lean not on your own mindset and your own way of thinking, but trust God. Hallelujah. Now is the time. If not now, then when? Then when? Only in the future will we see him as he is. Christ's first appearing was quiet almost unnoticed. When he, when he first came on the scene, you know, as, Ma as Mary's baby, you know, it says that he, he, was, he was very quiet, almost unnoticed. A humble manager, a simple, a simple shepherd, and insignificant, in an insignificant corner in the Roman Empire. His second appearing will be glorious and universal. He will be accompanied by his angels and will defeat every enemy until he subdues the whole earth. Hallelujah. How easily the events of the moment crowd, how easily the events of the moment crowd out, uh, uh, out the promise of eternity. Amen. Let me just read that again. How easily the events of the moment crowd out the promise of eternity. That sounds a little bit better. Uh, and so for some of you, sometimes the first time I've read this devotion, amen, is when I'm reading it with you, amen, because when I get up early in the morning, I'm reading other things that the Lord has laid on my heart. And so, uh, and so sometimes the first time I'm reading this is when I'm reading it with you. So I'm just as excited about the nuggets that I'm even picking up, amen, and, and about the things that the Holy Spirit is revealing to me. So sometimes what he's revealing to me for the first time you are, it's, I'm, I'm sharing it with you and it's being revealed to you also for the first time. So it says, how easily the events of the moments crowd out of the promises of, of eternity. So it say, don't let the things that are going on in your life right now, in the moment. You know, sometimes we just, you know, it, sometimes it's good to live in the moment, but sometimes, amen, it's not so good, amen, because sometimes when we get caught up in the events that are taking place right now, we let, we, we anxiety set in and, and we get overwhelmed and, and we let it crowd out, crowd out, amen, what God can do in our life in the situation. Amen. Whenever, you know, uh, 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 something happens that's chaotic, that, that, that tends to throw you for a loop or a surprise, we must always remember to calm ourselves and say, okay, okay, God's got me. What will, what would Jesus do? You know, how would Jesus react in this situation? Amen. Amen. How would he react? I never forget when they knocked on my door and told me my son had been uh, had been hit on, on the highway by a truck and they were airlifting him to the hospital. And they couldn't even tell me if he was yet alive. How, you know, right away the enemy tried to flood my mind with, oh my God, is he going to be dead or is he going to be alive? Or, oh my God, would I have insurance? Do I have, do I not have insurance? You know, so many thoughts rushed in and I had to grab myself. And, and because during the time, during the moment, during that moment, the police officers were standing at my door giving me that report. I guess I must have zoned out for a second because they say, are, are you okay, ma'am? Uh, do you need us to take you to the hospital? Are you okay? And, and, and when they said that, it, it kind of brought me back to the moment because for a moment I zoned out. But when it brought me back, I realized that, you know what? I'm a child of the king. 
and God has me. And I say, no, I'm fine. Uh, just give me a moment and I will be there. I will be right behind you. But what I was really needing was a moment to consult, to consult my father. What I was really needing was a moment to find out, okay, Lord, what's going on? What, what, what can I expect when I get there? What's happening? And in that moment, when I shut that door and I began to get on my knees and began to pray and ask the father, what, what could I expect? I heard one thing and that was, it is an over, I say it's over. This is not unto death. And that was all I needed. And I was able, amen, to, to, uh, to, to, to hear the promises of eternity, to hear what God was speaking in my ear. So what this is saying, don't let the events of what's happening right now, of what's happening today, crowd out what the promises of God is over your life. Speak those promises over your life. Begin to confess those promises over your life. You have the authority and you walk in the power. Amen. Begin to do that. And so the remainder of this devotion, because I know I'm kind of going a little bit over my time today, it says, the present seems so real. The unseen future seems so illusory. But in reality, the, opposed, the, the opposite is true. Don't let the present consume you. Instead, seek those things which are above where Christ is. Seek those things, amen, which are above what Christ is. And Christ, amen, is seating, seated at the right-hand throne of the Father. He is sitting at the right-hand throne of the Father. And we are seated in heavenly places in Him, amen. So we are seated high above whatever opposition, whatever troubles, whatever is going on in your life today. You are seated above that, amen. So be be uh, 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 be be begin to Amen. Uh, confess that. Begin to give God praise for, for, for that. Amen. Begin to give him praise and walk by faith, not by sight. Don't get caught up in what you see. Walk by faith. What has God spoken to you? What has he promised to you? Amen. What has he promised? What has been prophesied over your life? Begin to go back, amen, and pull some of those prophetic words, amen, that, that men and women of God has prophesied over, to, over your life and say, okay, God, this was a man of God. I believe, Father God, this was a man of God that spoke these words according to, amen, the power, the, 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 the gift that you've given him. God, I am claiming... I'm holding on. Amen. I am standing on the promises of you and began to confess that. Amen. So our thought for today, and I, I do know I went a little bit over, but I was just so excited to bring you this devotion today and this word of God today. Uh, but the thought for today, amen, is the things of this world, both the pleasures and the pains are temporary. I want you to remember that. The things of this world, whether they be pleasurable or whether they be, whether they be painful, they're, they're temporary. Amen. Paul calls them light afflictions. They're light afflictions. Amen. Learn to look beyond them and to seek your father's face. His presence is, in the, is, is a constant. His presence is a constant in an ever-changing world. His presence, let's say that again, is a constant in is a constant in an ever changing world. Amen. His presence is constant. It never changes. Amen. That's why I can come on, come on every day. Amen. With the same joy. Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Amen. Happiness is based on circumstances. You know, so yeah, you have a good day, you have a bad day. And sometimes, you know, our moods can be up and down and whatever. But when I begin to think, hallelujah, I don't care what's going on. In my world, when I begin to think that I am in this world, but not of this world, and when I think on the things that God has done for me, then this joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. And so with that being said, amen, I want to leave you with walk by faith and not by sight. Love you. Mwah.